Fish gang, what's up, my Grubhub gang? This is your boy Kingfish, aka Big Al, coming at you with another video. What it do? What it do, family? Hope everybody's doing well. On this beautiful Thursday, this is Hell No Thursday, guys. Uh, I didn't go live. I apologize to all my live crew on Thursday. I don't have a schedule for the day. I don't know what happened, but I missed my three o'clock uh, appointment. And by the time I got there, it was nothing there. So I got to do the dash now. So I got to stalk my app all day long. I got to look at it and just wait. Like some of y'all be doing, waiting till something pop up so I can get on today. I don't like going live when I don't have an order. Cause the whole purpose of going live is to do an order live. That's the whole purpose of going live. So now I just talk to y'all guys while I go get some coffee. I hope somebody give up their um, they spot. But today is hell no Thursday, family. Y'all know what time it is. Time to give out some hell no. Your dad said hell no, you're not getting no schedule today. So I had my alarm set on my other phone, but I've been having problems with my charger. And I just missed my alarm. Guys, I'm telling you, when the schedule come out, if you're not ready, you're not going to get a schedule. I wasn't ready and I didn't get a schedule. And Thursday are busy because some people get paid on Thursday. I screwed up, you know. So now I got the alarm set on all my clocks. Don't make sense, man. I'm going live Saturday morning because I'm not doing the, um, I'm not going to be able to do the podcast Saturday night. <sighs> I got some family things I got to take care of. So we going live Saturday for sure. We will be live Saturday. I just cut my phone on. I got it charged up and that's already 95%. So something is draining my battery and I don't know what it is. It might be time for an upgrade. Yeah, I think it's time for an upgrade. I had that phone for a long time. All right, guys. Today is hell no Thursday, but it's three types of hell no. You got a hell no. You got a hell no hell no. And you got that big old mighty. Oh, hell no. When somebody give you an old hell no, they mean, oh, hell no. That means you ain't getting nothing. Nada. I came home last night from work. I came home early because my knee was bothering me. I got my procedure done. And uh, I grabbed the old lady toe, smiled at her. She said, oh, hell no. I was like, damn. I don't want nothing. All I want is a kiss. That's how we play it off. I want, all I want is a kiss. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Went in the bathroom like oh, oh. It's all good man. It's all good She got me back She said you want to know why I was like nope I do not want to know why She said oh you don't want to play the game now huh? This was a, this was 
after midnight, so she got me, guys. You know, hell no, Thursday started after midnight. She's gonna say, because it's Kingfish, hell no, Thursday. She got me, she got me. She meant it too. I went fast asleep. Yep, I went fast asleep. Out of it, fam. I was done, finito. I woke up this morning, she was laughing at me. She said, oh, you went to sleep fast, didn't you? I was like, I was sleeping. She said, you wasn't sleeping. You was mad. Women, why do y'all always think we mad? We ain't mad. That's work. We ain't mad. I was sleeping. Yeah, I get my knee drained, man. That is no fun, buddy. No fun. All right, we're going to go up here and see if my girl, Mr. Lewis, up here. i get some air in my time. They air pump been broke. I think she got, I think she told, somebody told me she's in the inside now. I said, oh, Lord, y'all put in the inside. What y'all need on camera? She out here beating up men. The guy started laughing. She said, Mr. Lewis don't play. I seen her choke somebody. I said, oh, Lord, wait till I see Mr. Lewis. They said, Mr. Law, somebody came up there and the pump wasn't working right. And they was giving her a hard time. And he said, next thing you know, she had him by the neck. I said, oh, Lord, no, not Mr. Law. So now she on the inside, I believe. She gonna choke dude out, man. She told me she don't play. She undefeated when it come to men. I don't know what the men did, but she ain't got no problem with me. She out here choking people. <laughs> I used to love my father, man. My father, death, man. My father, man, he taught me a lot growing up, man. Ah! He taught me a lot growing up. Ah, it's still down. Gee, be Christmas. Yeah, my father taught me a lot, man. I remember when um, I used to go to, it's this place called 4th Street down in North Carolina. It's where all the hoodlums, that's all the strip clubs, like the bars. Back then it wasn't strip clubs, it was just bars. You had like four or five different bars on 4th Street. The worst street ever. They changed the name to Martin Luther King Boulevard. Ain't that about nothing? Like TV Christmas. Worst street in North Carolina was 4th Street. 4th Street had all the pool halls. It was just a bad spot where people would get killed, shot. I, I watched this woman get her arm shot off. No lie, when I was a little kid. And uh, I was in the bar with my grandfather when it happened. No, I was in the bar with my father when it happened. But anyway, I, I tell you, my father taught me, man. My father said, you always can test a man, right? So this guy was giving my father a hard time. He asked, he asked Alan King for a cigarette, which was my father's name. I was the name I thought. Alan King, he's not my real father. He's my sister's father but he took me you know him and my mother was married at the time you know long story short <laughs> he named he always wanted a son so he named me after my mom was cool but she let him know that i was not his son so anyway so this guy kept messing with him they're like kingfish give me a cigarette he's like go ahead man i'm with my son don't be asking me for no cigarette and he asked my father again like two or three times my father hauled off and slapped pie out. Open hand slap. Pie out. That man hold the side of his face and walked away. My father said, that's how you test a man. He said, if you slap a man, he walk away, he hold his face, you just tell him, go on about your business. Man, if you get hurt. <laughs> he said, because if, he really, if he's really a man, he's going to fight you. I'm like, Dad you, Dad, you just can't go slapping people. He said, that's how you test a man. Oh, no, God. I remember back in my work, my early work days at John Food Warehouse, man. 
you, you, you know, you always got tested. Somebody always want to test the supervisor, the boss. Well, I was the boss. I had owned the company. And we did an unloading, unloading service for John and Cisco. And uh, God just kept testing me, man. Just kept testing me. My check better be right. You better not mess up my money. This and that. I was like, man, go ahead, man. And I remember what my father said because this guy just kept, he always was in my face. Man, I hauled off and slapped that man. Pie out. I mean, I, I got the ear too. My father said, always catch that ear. You catch that ear, that's going to stun him for a minute. Man, I hauled off and slapped that dude, man. <laughs> Old boy sat down and started crying. I was like, come on, man. I was like, where, where all that toughness at now? He's like, man, I ain't been snapped like that in a long time. <laughs> I was ready to fight too. If it if would have came down to a fight, guys, I was ready. I don't know why the hell I'm telling y'all this story, but it made me think about it. This Mr. Lord's choking this man. Y'all know once I get to reminiscing, I love reminiscing. But yeah, ladies, that, that if you want to test your man, I don't, I don't don't go out there and slap your man and say Kingfish said slap him, because some of y'all men are crazy. But this from a man to a man. I don't want you to go out there and slap somebody to test and see if they're a man because they might beat the mess out of you. Uh oh. That's the slowest I ever seen an ambulance here in Tampa. Them guys got turbo, fella. You hear me? They got turbo. They normally do about 70, 80 miles per hour. They be hauled telling. I guess the reason why, because out here, especially the ambulance and the fire trucks, if they don't get to the scene quick, man, they burn up. As soon as something catch on fire, man, it look like a bomb blew off. All right, we almost, I got to keep checking my phone for my schedule, man. I'm so pissed, man. I sit right there on the busiest day. Thursday is one of my money days. And I'm off the day too, man. And I can't even dash. I'm not even fooling with um, Postmate. Postmate is a waste of gas and time, man. In my, in my, excuse me, in my area, not anybody else's area, so don't be hitting me up hollering about Stop dogging Postmate and this and that. I'm not dogging Postmate. In my market, Postmate is, is, is no good. It's Uber Eats and, and DoorDash. They rule the app world up here in Tampa. Postmate just get in when they get in. When I first doing, started doing Postmate here, it was mostly college kids. Then they done moved up to DoorDash and um. Do it, I said, Ubi. Excuse me, family. I don't know why I'm yawning. I got some good sleep last night, man. On the hell no Thursday at 12 a.m., my wife made me go to sleep early. She hit me with a hell no guy. And meant it. She's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> she got me back. I be getting her like that all the time. She said, it's not Thursday. I'm like, baby, it's every Thursday. I mean, it's Thursday everywhere. Somewhere it's a Thursday, so I can give you a hell no. All right, guys, my tip for you today. It's ice cream season. Everybody gonna be start getting ice cream. So there's two things you have to do. You either can get a double bag, put a bag inside of your bag, one of them little cool bags. You can get them at Walmart. Uh, it's called Ice Saver. It might have a different name, but we got one called Ice Saver. And uh, I'll get you a cooler. Because when you get that ice cream and stuff, and it's hot, your AC can't save it. You got to keep the stuff cool. Keep it from melting. 
Last year I didn't do a great job. But ever since I got the bag, I put it inside my bag, I've been able to uh, save people milkshakes and ice cream. So my tip for you guys today, go to Walmart, go to um, Sam Club, get another bag. So you can keep your ice cream. Oh, a big old mosquito. Oh, boy. That sucker was huge. It flew right across my eye. Get yourself a um, extra bag to put inside your bag when you get ice cream. Trust me, it works. I seen Big Rick had one yesterday, too. He had a bag inside his bag. But it do work. Truly do. All right, guys, I'm up here, man. I'm about to get me some coffee. Uh, you have to. You took my parking space. Yeah, they ain't gonna let you back up, man. I see you backing up. See, if this was Starbucks, I would have hit. You. But this ain't Starbucks, so I'm not gonna hit. Him. Frustrated. All right. Let me get in here and try to get in here before this woman. She look frustrated. She like she about to kill somebody. All right, fam. I'll see you in a minute. I'm back, fam. <laughs> I held the door for the woman that was rushing. I said, let me behold the door for you because I see... You look like you was about to hurt that woman that was parking in your parked in that parking spot. She said, I got five minutes to get to work. I'm late every day. I said, you still got a job? <laughs> she said, yeah. That's why I'm getting donuts. When I bring my boss donuts, he said to me, girl, you, you better stop being late. Stop bringing me donuts. You're making me gain weight. <laughs> so, at least she got a gimmick. So when she late, she stopped me to get her ball some donuts. I'd be scared that he gonna say, uh, thanks for the donut, you're fired. <laughs> I'm like, give me my donuts back. But that's funny though, that's funny. I like that. She got a plan, God. Yeah. I know what I gotta do when I wanna be on time. When me and my wife got to go somewhere, she got to dress up, she got to throw makeup on, she got to find a perfect outfit. I give her two and a half hours. So if it start at 4.30, baby, we got to be here at 2.30. I give her two and a half hours. Because if I don't, guys, we'd be late to everything. I made sure she can't look at the time or nothing. That's just a lady, man. That's all. You got one of those, you can't get them the time, man. If it start at four o'clock, you can't say it start at four o'clock. You see, I say it's two o'clock. Come on here, woman. And then she get ready on time, and y'all get that super early. Just say, baby, I just, you know, find something to do. She gonna be pissed. I don't never have to worry about that. Then she said, oh, the time just flew by. Yeah, always fly by. When it's time for you to get dressed and put some makeup on. I be walk, I be pacing the floor. So I just remember my that's how my father used to do. Give my mother an hour or two. We had to go to church. She'd be like, honey, what time we gotta be at church? Six o'clock. Don't no damn church start at no six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> she said, now nah, we gotta be there at seven. And she'd be ready by six thirty, seven o'clock. We leaving the house, I ain't gotta be there till nine. My father would stop and get us some breakfast. Yeah, I give my wife two and a half hours. She be hollering, I be mad. I be, I be mad that even at two and a half hours, we still don't get, we, we barely make it. And she said, ooh, we're gonna be super late. You damn right we're gonna be super late, woman. We're supposed to be there at 2.30, it's 3.30. <laughs> and we get there, we ain't gotta be there at 4.30. She be hot. I had more time. No, you didn't. 
Women, why y'all always say y'all have more time when you're already late? Oh, he parked in the crosswalk. She giving him hell. She must jog every day. She was like, you parked in the parkway. Girl, you don't get across the street, woman. When it's time to make a right, you know, the crosswalk, I said parkwalk. The crosswalk is where you need to be at to get that turn. I like seeing bicycles. Guys that ride the bikes get mad. And the people that walk across the street get mad. They don't like when you, especially the old people, they don't like when you're in the crosswalk, boy. They get it, boy. I had a buddy, uh, this old guy hit my hood one time. Boom! I'm like, what the hell? He was like, you in the crosswalk, buddy. I was like, man, you better get across the street. But you be eating pavement. <laughs> Big Bertha was upset. I tapped the gas a little bit. He said, oh, now you gonna hit me? I'm like, hey, that ain't me, that's Big Bertha. You hit Big Bertha, Big Bertha gonna hit back. <laughs> so I try to be mindful of that, guys. When I'm, uh, when I see people walking, not to block the crosswalk. Old man scared me. <laughs> he put his hands on Big Bertha. Big Bertha do hit back, but I respect my elders. Oh, so let me tell you what happened at Dunkin' Donuts. So I, I'm in Dunkin' Donuts today, and um, the girl who always wait on me. Ron taught her how to make my coffee. She said, Mr. Allen. I said, what's up, baby girl? She said, I, I got you today. She made my coffee. She said, it, it's 11, 11, 11 and a half. Can't give her a 12, I can taste the sugar. Um, she said, I'm gonna give you a um, senior citizen discount, okay? Don't tell nobody. I'm like, baby, I ain't telling nobody. I don't mind practicing. <laughs> Shoot, it, it took, it knocked off like, um, 40 something cents off of my um, my tab. That's 40 cents going into tomorrow coffee money. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm not saying a word. Shoot. She said, you very nice person. I I'll give you a discount. I'm like, okay. Shoot. She's sitting up there smiling. I'm smiling too. Like, you know, that's 40 cents extra that's going into Nate tomorrow. I might can get a donut. <laughs> you know? Ah, she, she put more money in the coffee fund. Ah, that's good. I ain't gonna tell nothing. Only time I snitch when it's time to go to jail. I ain't going to jail for nobody. He did it. That guy right there, he did it. No, no, I ain't had nothing to do with it. I was just walking. I seen who did it. He tried to say I did it, but he did it. <laughs> I don't play, guys. No, sir. I ain't doing time for nobody. You can sit there and play dumb if you want to. I mean, when I was younger, we, we was teenagers. Guy said, just don't say anything. I like, dude, I gotta go home and get killed by my mama and I ain't do anything. You better be ready. You better be prepared because uh, you know you broke that man's window. So me and my buddy, we was walking up the street. His name was Jamie. Jamie was bad as hell, man. And he had a brother. His brother's name was Tim. And that man had, if he if he just put his hands on you, if he just touched your face, he'd knock you out. Tim was uh, the knockout artist going around in the neighborhood knocking people out. So Jamie had a baseball, he threw the baseball and broke this man's window. I guess we was about 13, 14 years old. And the man called the police. The police had us in the car, they separated. And he said, don't say nothing. I was like, man, you done lost your mind, man. I am not getting killed by my mama. My mom was still putting hands on me until I was 18. Mom didn't play. The cop said, who broke that window? I said, he broke it. <laughs> he threw his baseball through. I said, okay. 
He didn't do nothing to give us a citation. We gave him a citation. So he was like, Lee, I can't believe you snitched on me. I thought, like, yeah. I was like, shoot. He didn't get me in trouble. So Jamie always called me a snitch. But let me tell you something. Jamie did something bad and he was over my house. My mother lit him up. I mean, she beat the hell out of Jamie. I mean, she beat the hell out of him. You know what he told me? He was like, now see why you snitch? Cause your mother put them hands on you. I said, now you see? I said, now you see why I snitched on that day we got pulled over by the cop and you broke that window? I was like, do you think I wanna go home and get what you got? <laughs> I think she caught Jamie in her, I think Jamie was in her pocketbook and my mom caught him in her, going through her pocketbook and she beat the hell out of him. He beat the hell out of him. He hollered, help! Mom put it on him. Yep. Everybody in the neighborhood loved my mother. Now. Everybody in the neighborhood. My mother was well respected. She was well respected. She cooked for all the thugs. Yep. They be on the corner selling drugs. My mother be on the uh, in the kitchen cooking for them. She would sell dinners. My mother used to sell dinners. And man, she used to sell a lot of dinners. Man, she used to sell crab cake. I mean, the whole nine yards, man. I remember people used to come knock on the door and whatnot. People in the neighborhood that everybody scared of, and I used to watch them coming in and they'd be like, "Hey, little fella," I'd be like. What's up, man? Like, the mom's cooking today. Mom, you cooking today? She say, yeah, tell them to have a seat. And they'll put that gun on the table. I'll be like, wow. And my mom would come out there and say, you don't get that gun off my dad on the table. You done lost your mind. Put that thing away around my kids. They be like, yes, Miss D. <laughs> mom had a thug skin. So I grew up around a bunch of thugs, man. Had those kids, man. I have a lot of respect for my mom. Man. She do not play, man. She do not play. If you ask anybody about Miss D down Flag House Project, they're gonna tell you, oh yeah, Miss D was cool. She was cool, man. And if you did something wrong in the neighborhood and she felt like you did something wrong, she knocked on your door. I'm like, mom, you you crazy as hell. She said, like, stay right here. I was like, oh, I'm going inside with you. <laughs> Mom said, why you shoot that boy? You know, daggone well you shouldn't have shot that boy. I'm sitting up there like, oh my God. She said, well, you need to apologize to that family. Pay for that poor medical bill. They give my mother money. My mother go over there and give it to their mother. That's how, that's how my mother go, man. Mom was a no joke. All right, guys, I know this ain't got nothing to do with Dash, but you know I like reminiscing. I don't have uh, a schedule today, so I had to talk a little bit. Talk about mom dudes. All right, so guys, I got to to go. My tip for the day is make sure that uh, this is summertime. It's starting to heat up everywhere. Make sure you get an extra bag. They, they got them at, it's a cold bag. It's, it's not like a big thermal bag, but it's a cold bag. And it's good for sitting uh, inside of your regular bag and it protects your ice cream and, and stuff like that. So make sure, it keep the food hot too. So make sure y'all get that bag, man. Or get a cooler, keep some ice. And sometimes y'all don't, you know, if you like me, don't have no AC, it get hot in here real quick. It get real hot. So you gotta make sure you take care of the customer, man. Last year I did bad with shakes and ice cream. And then I discovered that bag in the middle. So I've been able to save some shakes and ice cream because people will order, man. People will order cold stuff knowing it's 100 degrees outside and they get mad when they get, when they get it in the little, in this melt, melting the sun. I just woman told me, damn, you couldn't turn your AC all the way up? I'm like, you you had to order ice cream? You couldn't order no dang old cold soda? 
I'm like, it's 100 degrees out here. Just walking to your door is your ice cream melting. So I try to preserve it by the, um, using the bag. You got to learn stuff when you're out there, man. All right, family, I got to go, man. Thanks for listening to me, you know. This is therapeutic for me when I just get to talk and I ain't got nothing to do. So I got to go in here. I got to do my honeydew list today because the wife know I don't have no schedule, so she got my day planned out. And I'm off today, too, because I got my knee done and whatnot. So I need y'all to pray for me. I'm putting myself on a prayer list that the wifey don't find too much for me to do, you know. I'm going to be dusting. I'm going to be cleaning areas and everything. All right, family. This is your boy, Kingfish, a.k.a. Big Al. I'm out, guys. If you're dashing, keep dashing. If you're grubbing, keep grubbing. If you're not dashing, you're not grubbing. You better get yourself some dashing grub, man. Peace.